In tonight's cover story, and we are talking about atoning for what was taken away. A conversation is happening at the state capitol asking how can California right the wrongs of slavery and has the impacts it has had on black families and generational wealth. For more than a year, we've been following the story of the first in the nation statewide reparations task force. They plan to make recommendations on possible reparations. And as we celebrate Black History Month, ABC 10's Becca Habegger is sharing what the task force is discussing. Now, Becca and Madison, the California Reparations Task Force is poised to make national headlines in a few months. Members tell me they believe their two part report with the first part coming out this June will spark important conversations all across the country. The way California goes is the way the country goes. We start things that other people either are afraid to do or unwilling to do. State Assembly Member Reginald Byron Jones Sawyer Sr. is one of nine members of the California Reparations Task Force. They've met almost monthly since June, tackling different topics each time, like gentrification and homelessness, racism in banking, discrimination in the tech sector, and at the start of it all, slavery. The fact that African Americans were property. We were treated like animals. He says the work of the reparations task force is bringing an ugly history into sharp focus. Hearing those stories, it really struck inside me, into my soul. The task force has heard testimony from invited speakers, including doctors, professors, civil rights leaders, and activists, as well as comments from the public. What we've heard, you know, in terms of testimony over the past several months, are not only just how, you know, slavery, you know, has impacted, you know, African-American circumstances, but how this community continues to be disadvantaged. UC Berkeley professor and task force member Dr. Javon Scott Lewis says the long lasting impacts of slavery stretch into modern day discrimination in everything from housing, zoning and education to policing, public health and the accumulation of wealth. Look, today we don't treat African-Americans as slaves. But when you look at the prison system, you go, oh, I now can connect the dots that the prison industrial system might just be another form of slavery. We're talking about the, the price that African Americans continue to pay, um, you know, for the progress, you know, of our nation and of course of the state. It's a through line that will continue, in fact, if you don't finally have a reparative accounting for its ongoing development. Task force members are currently working on a two part report. Part one due this June with their findings from the past year and part two in June of 2023 with recommendations for reparations, eligibility and costs. Yes, it might be financial. It might be legislative. It might be a budget remedy. The reason we have to do this is because the measures we've already put in place were not enough. That's why he hopes the first report coming out this June paves the way for the reparation recommendations. What we have in this first report is, I think, one of the most comprehensive, you know, accounting of, of that history. It's like, let's connect the dots of why things are bad right now, why things are not so good for African Americans right now. The task force hopes this year's report will spark conversations on the state level, be a model for other states, and even prompt discussion on the federal level. This needs to be done. The California Reparation Task Force's next meeting is on February 23rd and 24th. Now, each meeting has a section where members of the public can call in and comment. Task Force members tell me that's where they've gotten some good ideas, questions, and input, and they encourage people to watch and participate. Madison? Yeah, Becca, sometimes the best thing you can do is just tune in to listen and absorb all that information. Becca, thanks.